okay. So hopefully that made sense. Again, feel free to ask questions um, if it doesn't. All right, linear dependence. Um, this refers to when you know we can describe one vector with um, a set of other vectors. Um, for example, um, OM in this case can be described by a set of other vectors, right? Um, pretty easily. Um, linear independence is when you can't. Um, it's, it's you know, I guess it's it's kind of kind of makes sense. Um, for example, with um, See, these, these set of three here are linearly independent. Um, however, they, because we can't exactly describe them as a combination of the other, right? Um, however, we do need to multiply um, and stretch and squish them before they can be linearly dependent. Um, so that is our rule here. Um, so to figure out linear independence, um, the first thing is we need to write our linear independence formula down and then write all our vectors in matrix form. And then, so the reason we do it in matrix form is just because it's a bit easier to see. Um, and then multiply um, everything in um, and then make a set of simultaneous equations and then solve those three pairs of simultaneous equations for M and N. Um, if two things are linearly dependent, there exists a value for M and N. If they're independent, there doesn't exist a that value. <laughs> Sorry. If they're linearly independent, there doesn't exist a value for m and n. See, it doesn't work. Linear independence does work. Um, linearly dependent. P refers to the term in front of C. Usually we can just, you know, um, set P as equal to 1. Uh, usually... We can set let p equal 1, and then it doesn't matter anymore. So, yeah, pretty nifty. Okay, have a go at this. I'll give you guys a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Okay, um, hopefully that was enough time though. Uh, so let's start walking through this. Okay, so we want to know that, uh, or we want to find out if there exists MA plus BC. Oh, I'll just keep the same conventions as before. So NB is equal to PC. We want to know if this exists. <laughs> um, you could include P, it doesn't really matter, because um, we have three sets of equations, right? So we can um, solve this including P as well, but um, it doesn't really matter. Just to simplify the situation, we can say P is equal to 1, um, because these are arbitrary numbers, right? It doesn't, ultimately doesn't really matter. Um, and so then we can get our set of equations. I'm just going to multiply this in here, so pretend like there's an m and an n there. So we'll get um, 4m plus 2n is equal to negative 4. Um, m minus n 
is equal to 2 3m plus 3n is equal to 6. All right, so we have three equations, two variables. So we can choose any two equations um, and fiddle around with that to see if we get our answer. Um, I'm going to choose the last two equations just because I think they look a little bit similar. So I'm going to choose 2 and 3 to do my maths. Um, what I want to do first is I want to divide 3 by 2. So divide equation 3 by 2. And that's going to give me... Oh, actually, sorry, not 2. Divide it by 3. My bad. So yeah, I want to divide that by 3. Um, and that's going to give me... That's going to become n. And that's going to become n. And this is going to become 2. Okay. So um, we will get m minus n is equal to 2. And m plus n is equal to 2. Um, okay. Weirdly feels like a contradiction, but let's just go with it. Um, so next I'm going to combine both my equations here. So we'll get 2m is equal to 4. And then m is equal to 2. Okay. And I can plug that back in here to resolve. So plugging m into there, I'll get 2 plus m is equal to 2. And this tells me that n is equal to 0. If I plug it into here, um, same answer, uh, pretty consistent results there. So we found that you know m is equal to 2 and n is equal to 0 in two of these equations and the very last step is to take it and plug it into this equation here and test the if the instance is correct so I'm chucking in m is equal to 2 into this so 4 times 2 plus 2 times 0 doesn't equal negative 4 just by looking at it we can tell right therefore a b c are linearly de independent. Uh, I'm just going to write L I. So that just means linearly independent. Um, that's not like an actual definition or anything. I just made that up on the spot. Like L I. Um, try not to use that on your exams. I just did it because I don't want to write out linearly independent. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. So just a general approach. Multiply everything by N, M and N. Um, then do some simultaneous equations with it on two of the equations, and then use the last equation to check if everything actually fits and works. Okay, um, have a go at this one as well. I'll create a poll for this one as well. Um, are they... Well, I don't want to use choice, but I want word cloud. Are they... Independent. Okay. Have a go at this. Um, chuck your answer up on that word cloud. And we'll see what everyone gets.
Okay, um, let me see what the answers are so far. So, not lonely independent, and so we've got one that says not lonely independent, and another answer that says yes, they are independent. Alrighty, um, let me have a go at solving this and we'll talk about it. Alright, so again, I'm just going to write the M and N in front because I'm lazy. Um, and so what we'll have here is M plus 3N is equal to 3. M minus N is equal to negative 5. Uh, minus M plus 4N is equal to 11. All right, so I'm going to use the last two equations because I can just add them together and cancel out the m's, right? So I'm going to add these two together. So I'll get 3n is equal to 11 minus 1 minus 4. And again, I'm only doing this to try to eliminate silly mistakes. So then I'll get 3n is equal to 6. And so that tells me n is equal to 2. Okay, cool. So then here I can do the same. So then m minus 2 is equal to minus 5, and then m is equal to minus 5 plus 2, which is equal to minus 3. And the last step is to check if it's consistent with what we have here. So minus 3 plus 2 times 3 is equal to 3. Yes, this is true. Um, but I'll work it out entirely anyway. So minus 3 plus 6 is equal to 3. So therefore, um, no. Since there exists an M and an N, um, they are linearly dependent. So they are L, D. Linearly dependent. Let's have a look at what everyone else said. Um... Yeah, not linearly independent. Nice. Um, that should be the predominant answer there. Um, so good job to everyone who um, got not linearly independent or linearly dependent. Um, I'm a bit interested to see why people got um, that they are independent. Um, feel free to throw that in the Q&A area um, or maybe, you know, chuck it up into the cloud itself um, as to why um they got independent maybe i could have made a silly mistake that's entirely plausible um so i'll double check my working out just because i don't want to have made a silly mistake so um m plus 3n is equal to 3 again because we're assuming p is equal to 1 m minus n is equal to negative 5 negative m plus 4n is equal to 11 again add these two so that should be 3n is equal to 6, n is equal to 2, um, this one is going to be minus 3, yeah that makes sense, so then minus 3 plus 2 times 3, I'm pretty sure, um, since m and n do exist, um, I'm pretty sure um, they should be linearly dependent, um, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, um, yeah, because it's entirely possible. Um, you know, maybe send me an email if I'm wrong or something. Um, if I do get any of these questions wrong, just feel free to send me an email. Um, and I'll have a look at it again. Okay, um, so that is that. Let's move on.